Everyone has a story. Pretty crazy evening. Hustle and see the fire that has fallen. We all take a different path and face different hurdles. I'm your host, Sarah Strackhouse, and in this show, I get to interview inspiring women who are dedicated to making change. The world is tough, so be tough. Welcome to the Strackhouse. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us. Our next guest has been referred to as the Cheryl Sundberg of the energy industry, and she's truly a trailblazer and also the CEO of Pink Petro. Katie Maynard, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Sarah. Absolutely. We're so excited you're on. I want to talk to you a little bit about your professional career before Pink Petro and what it was like working in a place that's an industry that's an especially male-dominated industry. Well, that's a great question. Honestly, until that moment, that fateful moment when I was sitting next to a gentleman who asked me what I was doing in a dark and dangerous business like energy, I really hadn't thought much of it. I had heard other women uh, struggling with being around uh, or being in a male dominated industry. For me, after working in the field, working in the office, it was all kind of the same. Uh, but I was inspired uh, by this conversation I had with him, and we decided to uh, pursue a conversation on why it shows the energy industry as a path. And it was then and there when I made the decision that I was going to have to leave the industry in order to change it. Wow, I love that. So tell me a little bit why you did join the energy industry, and then how you created Pink Petro. What is Pink Petro for those who might not have heard of it yet? But I know it's huge and global, so I'm excited to hear more. No, so Sarah, it is. Uh, so first of all, how did I get into the industry, energy industry? So since I was a child, I was I grew up in the oil and gas industry. My father uh, is an engineer and worked several years back in the '80s. Uh, in the last bust that we we had, one of the, the major busts that the industry seen when he lost his jobs in, in the 80s, that he was pretty insistent, you know, maybe you should go down a different path. And I did for a short while until I got the call to work at Enron many years ago and pretty much went against his wishes and got into the energy <laughs> business and have ever have, have been in it since. Okay, and I know I've learned a little bit about Pink Petro. I enjoyed doing stories with you in the past. Tell everyone what is Pink Petro and the mission of it. So Pink Petro was a cocktail napkin idea that I <laughs> came up with on a flight with, we call him Bubba. So I don't remember Bubba's real name, but I call him Bubba. He was my Bubba. <laughs> and I have to thank this man because he changed the trajectory of my life. Um, but I was sitting on a flight between Houston and London, actually London and Houston. And he asked me, he said, where's your husband? And I said, my husband's at home. And he said, well, what do you do for a living? And I explained to him that I was in health and safety at BP. He said to me, what's a pretty young lady like you doing in a dark, dangerous business like oil? And I thought, I am so going to change to this. I'm tired of hearing women can't do, you know, women and men can't do each other's jobs. Um, there's a whole host of things that uh, that both men and women can do in the energy industry. So let's put that off to the side. But really the other part that I was fascinated with was this dark and dangerous narrative. You know, I asked him a few more questions and I realized that he was in the industry too. And you know, we need to be advocates for what we do. We need to be, we need to own the fact that we are an industry that helps sustain life. And so I said, I'm going to create this digital community, um, and I want to make it a place where people want to talk about what we do, but also learn about what we do, so that we can engage more people to be a part of it. As you know, the world is concerned about climate change. Uh, oil and gas companies are right there with society. They want to see that we live a sustainable, profitable, prosperous future. Um, but that's going to take a lot of hearts and minds. It's going to take a lot of diversity and inclusion. It's going to take a lot of um, ingenuity. And that comes down to people. So I created Pink Petro as a way to get women engaged in the business, uh, to get minorities engaged in the business and uh, to develop a pipeline of talent so that I'm not telling my daughter, like my father kind of told me, 
you know, you don't want to get into this business uh, because it's, it's, you know, because of the cyclical nature. I love that. So tell me a little bit about how much you've expanded. I know before uh, when we talked, you were in something like 17 different countries with Pink Petro. Tell me a little bit about the growth. And I understand you've also uh, recently been to Congress and um, opened up a new career site. Yeah. So I think before we spoke last, uh, or right before we spoke, um, shortly after you and I talked last, I unfortunately lost my home and the business to oh, no. Hurricane Harvey. And uh, wow. that was a huge, uh, huge learning for me as a business owner. And uh, we live in the energy corridor, so in the energy capital of the world, but we were caught uh, as a part of the West Side flooding. I thought I was gonna shut the business down, to be honest, I thought, I'm done, I'm spent, I'm over. And what I learned through Hurricane Harvey was how to flex that muscle of resilience. Mm. And I knew that this was important work. And of course it made it very personal because you do not get 60 inches of water in your backyard um, if there aren't climate effects happening. So to me, the work became even more important and we decided to, to press forward. So we launched a new career site. We are now in well over a hundred con- countries across the world. Wow. Um, we launched Experience Energy, which is just experience.energy. Uh, we launched Experience Energy in 2017 to address the careers piece, because the thought is in order to get more people into the energy industry, they need to understand more about the kind of work that's possible and they need to understand and see those stories. So much like you're interviewing me, we do a lot of storytelling around the jobs, around the possibilities, around the op- uh, career options, and around all the fo- all forms of energy. Right. You and I experience energy every day. Right now, we're having this conversation possible because of energy. Um, the so lights we really in the studio, get, all from energy. <laughs> uh, right, the lights in the studio, the yeah. makeup we're wearing. Um, yeah. People don't understand that a lot of what we use today are components that are made from plastics and petroleum. And so while we are in this transition, people are very concerned about uh, our the state of our climate and where we're headed. Um, the idea is, is I kind of call it E3, P3. So my belief is through an equal workforce, not just men and women, but multiple generations, multiple cultures, uh, multiple backgrounds, plus the environment, we're gonna create this new economy. Sure. So you brought up Congress. I got a call uh, about sometime in February. But Congress is really uh, taking a hard look at what does that workforce of the future need to look like? Energy is a big part of the American economy. It's a huge part of the global economy. And it's also on everyone's mind. You know, what does the energy of the future look like? And I thought it was pretty good on Congress's part to be thinking about what people resources, what human resources do we need to drive these natural resources, right? Because these natural resources have Mm -hmm. been in the ground, we've been developing them. And so I went to Congress, I brought my daughter, Allie. And so she fell asleep. So the chairman, I will never forget, the chairman said, I think your your daughter has has dozed off. And I thought, okay, this is great. My daughter has dozed off in front of all of Congress um, or House members. Right, it right. was really, it was a great experience to be yeah. able to educate people about the fossil fuel industry, the various job opportunities we provide. And I got to be honest with you, I walked into that room really concerned that there might be a, a debate you know, what we do is contentious. I find the energy conversation is way over politicized, much like the equality conversation is over politicized. Mm-hmm. And when I walked out, I walked out with handshakes and business cards and friends because we all agreed that Americans, the people that, you know, you and I, the people that are make up the fabric of our society should be the hearts and minds and the hands behind this energy revolution and this shift right from non-traditional fossil fuels to the uh, alternative age. 
And for those who are watching and might not know that much about the energy sector or the industry, they might hear drilling, fracking, words that you know seem very intimidating, but the alternative age, the alternative industry, can you explain a little bit about what that means? So the alternative industry or the alternative side of the, the house are you know, wind and solar and we see the increased use of, of electric vehicles or what you you know hear called as EV. You know, a lot of states are moving to solar power, right? And my argument to Congress was this is actually the best use case or metaphor for diversity and inclusion. We need all forms of energy and all people looking at this we're not going to enter this alternative age without the fossil age right um and as somebody who's personally been impacted you know yeah. by a massive flood i don't want my children's generation or her, her child's generation you know to have to suffer through the things that yeah. you know we have so it was a really great experience to be a part of the private sector and the public sector kind of coming together to really learn and ha and understand what we need to move the needle forward. Because you see yeah. a lot of arguing about it. You see a lot of politicization. You see a lot of policy. You see a lot of yak yak on one side and yak yak on the other side. But then you got to look to the middle, the progressives, right, to, to really move the ball forward when it comes to change. Yeah. So. so uh, what advice do you have for women, for people just in the energy sector, in the industry, trying to make their way, trying to, you know, ethically kind of come to terms with whatever they're trying to do in the industry and also just trying to find jobs and and be heard and, you, you know, coming coming back from struggles like you did with the hurdle with the, um, uh, you know, with the flooding and everything like that. What advice do you have for people that you want them to take away from watching this? Well, so I talked about E3 earlier. P3 for me, the other side of kind of my manifesto or my thoughts are all things are po possible through people, passion, and purpose. So I tell people all the time, no matter what you do, because you're going to spend a lot of time in your day working, do something that matters. Mm -hmm. I think the energy industry is an amazing place to work. It's dynamic. It's global. It is political, unfortunately. Um, and it's the single largest challenge that our generation is facing. Uh, so I look at that and I say, okay, I can get up every day and go work in support of that. I think you get up every day, you bite the elephant one bite at a time, <laughs> but you do things <laughs> that matter, that have purpose mm -hmm. and that you have passion for. Oh, I love that. Well, Katie, thank you so much. I do want to tease your book. I know you have a book coming out soon towards the end of the year, Grow With The Flow. Uh, where can people find out more information about that and about you if they have questions or want to talk and, and have enjoyed the conversation more? So they can go to my personal website, katiemaynard.com, and it'll be out, I think, out on all the distribution channels, Amazon and all those wonderful technology channels we all have. The good stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it only Perfect. took me 20 years to write the book, but we finally got it done. Hey, it's here now. <laughs> That's right. Love it. Well, Katie, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you for all you're doing to tell the stories of women. Absolutely. You know, I'm enjoying it. And I think that uh, women in the en energy sector is a big part of it as well. So thank you. Absolutely. We're changing the world. We, that we are. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We hope you leave feeling inspired uh, just like I am. So we'll see you next time. If you'd like to nominate an inspiring woman, email me at sarahstrackhouse at gmail.com. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.